Welcome back, folks. Today we're not at Piney Grove. We're out on my hunt and lease. And I've got two deer condos on this plot so I can hunt the east wind or the west wind. Spin around here slowly. And you can see right, right there there's a 4x4 four four condo on the other side of the plot. So I'm facing the east now. So if it's an east wind, which would be there, or a northeast wind, I, I would hunt this condo. Obviously, I would hunt the other condo on a west wind. So this is a condo. It's uh, 12 feet tall to the floor, and it's a 5x5 five five box that I built. And it's got a couple glass windows in it. I'll throw up some pictures here of when I built it. But uh, this thing actually blew over during Hurricane Michael. I had a heck of a time getting it back up. But you can see the roof is bent because it, uh, the way it landed, it was, it was all messed up back here in these uh, planted pines. But I was able to get it back upright. But this is my trail going to the back of the condo. And you'll see that uh, the dirt is exposed. And that's because I took the back blade of the tractor bucket and I scraped off all the pine needles and anything that would be crunchy here so that when I'm approaching this in the dark, in the morning, um, it's as quiet as it can be. And I wanna be able to get into my, my condo without spooking deer that may be in the pot or in the feeder. Okay. But I can get in and out of this condo with deer in the pot as long as they're 40, 50 yards away and the wind's in my favor. But that's very important to have a uh, unobstructed, quiet path that you can walk in uh, downwind from your pot. And you'll notice that I put some tin on the legs of my condo here to shield my entry as I'm climbing the ladder. But let's climb up in this thing and I'll show you the view from inside. Now just to show how this thing was built, I used metal brackets called elevators. I think they either give a three degree or a five degree angle on your four by fours that go down. And then I framed the actual condo with two by sixes and then I ran these two by fours from the front of the condo to the back to hold up the porch. And they're held with um, some sort of rafter string. You know, you see them, those metal brackets, galvanized metal brackets. But I used to not have porches on my condo and it made, and it, made it really difficult to get in and out because uh, you'd have to come right from the ladder into the door. But now I have this, you know, four foot by five foot porch and it really helps me get in and out of my condo. So when I'm hunting, I am really careful to be quiet. So I'll turn that really slow. And I try not to have any oil smell or anything out here, but I try to get my latches perfectly aligned so that I can do that. And then if I have to trim the door because it's swollen or the condo's out of square, I'll do that. Okay, for the roof, you can see I have two rafters there that are ripped down two by fours. And then I have a support on the front going left to right and then plywood. Um, whatever plywood I use to sheathe it. And that's probably three or four pieces of plywood. And then I put felt on top of that plywood. And you can see down the side here, there's a gap because I have these two by twos right here on top of the felt. And then I put the tin on top of the two by twos. So you can see it holds well. That's all the damage from when it got bent from Hurricane Michael. So you can see I have some insulation on the front and that's not for heat or cool. It's just sound deadening. Uh, somebody was done with insulation in their house and they had some foam board, so I just glued it up there. And since all the deer are going to be in front of the condo, it's just a, a sound deadening if you drop something or if you accidentally kick the wall. And then I have my shelves here. I have some old carpeting from our house in here. It probably wasn't a good idea because it probably smelled like dog or whatever, but it's been out here 10 years or so, and I air it out occasionally. But that uh, keeps my floor quiet when I'm moving around inside the condo. So I'm going to show my window design. I don't open this window much, but normally it's like that. And then you turn that and I made this little bar. So I take this bar and I stick it on this screw right there. Then I push out my window and I got a little V notch and that holds open my window. So I'll get deer right there under the condo. So on this side, I just have a piece of glass that I've um, sealed into the plywood. You also see I painted the inside black to make it very shadowy. But so that the door doesn't make noise in the wind, I put these little nails in here. You just pull them out with your hand. One on this side as well. And then once you pull those nails out, then the door should swing open. 
So I swing open the door and then I use that little buttress piece of plywood to hold the window open. So I have camo here. You'll see a lot of people with condos don't have camo. They just have that open, but I, I just don't want to take any chances. I have deer, turkeys, everything come right here. And that's, uh, that's probably 10 yards if it's that far to that little clump right there. So that's what the view looks like. The feeders there in front. I've got uh, young pines to the right there, all the way to the right. And the deer come out of there. That's real thick. The deer will come behind the other condo, and the deer will come from the left across the road, uh, crossing from the thicker forest. But a lot of my hunting uh, footage that I'll show this year will be of deer in this plot. And uh, this is one of my favorite condos. Just the way it's built, the way it's designed, the way to get in, in and out of it easily. I'll talk a little bit about this chair. These chairs are great, great chairs for um, condos. And they're Texas Hunter product and it's an aluminum chair. Well, it's got a really wide base and a backrest and then an armrest. And those armrests are great, you know, when you're sitting in a condo for a long time waiting for deer, you know, it just saves your your shoulders and your elbows just to be able to have that armrest. But they're really well made and we've got these in in all our condos. Sit in this Texas Hunter chair and talk about this condo a little bit. But size-wise, this is a 5x5 five five condo and I would say the perfect size to see out of for you know a grown man is a, a four by four condo that way you can see out of all four sides if you've got windows but you don't have a lot of room for anything else in two of my condos are four by fours so i'd recommend doing five by five i've got shelves built in here i can have a solid rest when i'm shooting uh, long shots i try not to take real long shots but uh, i do have a solid rest in here i've got sandbags i've got all that stuff but a five by five condo gives you enough room you can bring a second person and square is better than say four by six. And a four by six or four by eight is a better use of lumber, but a five by five just gives you more uh, depth, uh, more room to move around. And uh, on height, I like to have my ceilings or my my uh, my roof at uh, six feet or better so that you can stand up completely. Now, something I didn't do in that condo, and you can see the window that faces the plot behind me, I didn't put a window up higher. So when I'm standing, I don't, I'm not able to see. And, uh, you know, you got to stand and stretch your legs. And when you're doing that, then you're bending over to look out the window. So I wish I'd put windows at the six foot level so I could just see while I was standing up and stretching. But the condo's constructed out of ripped down, treated two by fours. Some of them may be untreated. It was just whatever I had laying around. And it's exterior grade plywood. It's probably seven sixteenths. Maybe it's three eighths. I don't know. It's not, I don't think it's half inch. But I sealed it and I painted it and uh, it's, it's deteriorating a little bit. It's not rotting, but um, it's starting to buckle. I think you can see some buckling behind me. So I have put some peel and stick roofing on it just to kind of extend it some more. And, uh, and that seems to be working. But uh, I did coat it with Rust-Oleum um, exterior grade paint that was enamel, not latex, because I wanted to have a, uh, I wanted it to last longer. Okay, so that condo is ready to go. I just swept it out a little bit and uh, um, shook out the rugs. Made sure that the windows weren't sticking and the door wasn't sticking. It had a little bit of fungus or mushroom or whatever. Fungus, I guess. Growing when the, when I tried to first open that door. Once I kicked that out of the way, it was fine. Guess I'll grab my brush cutter on that trail behind the condo. It's, uh, it's overgrown a little bit. And I want to be real quiet when I'm walking in. And, you know, you have your gun over your shoulder. You have your pack on and all those different things. And uh, those things will catch catch those twigs and those branches. So I want to get all that cleared up. So I guess that's what I'll do. I'll go grab the brush cutter and put on my Florida suit and uh, do a little little clearing up. But uh, I wanted to show what I have here. I have a brush cutter. And if you don't have a brush cutter, um, well, first of all, it's a string trimmer, but it has a brush cutter attachment on it. But if you don't have a brush cutter, you should look into getting one. I use this thing all the time on our property, and I use it all the time out here on the hunt and leash. So let me show you what I got. So I'm a big fan of steel products, and uh, this thing is um, 20, I don't know, anywhere 17 to 20 years old. It's the Steel FS55T, but this is the two-stroke model. This thing has literally hundreds of hours on it and hundreds of abusive hours. I bought an extra string trimmer attachment. It is, uh, it's got the combi system or combi system where this 
little turn, this little uh, screw here lets you take everything from there off in one piece. And I took the other, I used one as a string trimmer and I took the second one and removed all the string trimmer parts of it, the guards and everything. And I put on this blade that I got from Amazon. And uh, I've had two blades like this. The first one lasted a couple years and this one's probably a year old or so, maybe a little bit older, but uh, it's in good shape. It still cuts good. And that thing is the ticket. That's a money maker right there. It'll go through all that brush around that tree. Any thick weed stalks like um, that dog fennel right there that a string trimmer that would just laugh at a string trimmer. Briars, you see the tops of some of these pines are interfering with my view out of that condo. So I can reach up with this thing and you know, 10 foot tall or so and just knock the tops off of those pines with one whack. But yeah, that thing is invaluable. So uh, number one, um, if you have property, if you have a farm, if you have a hunting lease, invest in that and then get one of those blades. They're easy enough to find on Amazon. They're carbide tip, so you don't sharpen them. You just use them till they get dull and you can get, you can get hours of use. I put 40, 60 hours on that thing and it's probably still got that many left in it. So they last a long time and they're like 25, 30 bucks. So definitely worth uh, the investment. Okay, so you can see right there behind me that I cleared the tops of those pine trees and a little bit of brush that was overhanging. So I got clear shooting lanes. I have nothing that obstructs my uh, my view or my shooting lane in front of me. And then when the deer come from that side over there, which would be my left side coming coming out from the thick into the into the pot, that uh, when they step out, I, I knocked off all the overhanging brush so that I have clear shots on them as well. And it's not just about shooting, it's about watching them. It's about um, seeing their behavior, seeing their mannerisms, seeing their body language, because you may be hunting a buck, and uh, if you got a doe and she's looking over her shoulder, you know, maybe a buck might be coming. So anyway, I wanna be able to see that and not have branches obscure my view. So I got that all trimmed up, and I'm gonna do some trimming over here in front of this other condo now. doing is just clearing that area out there just so I could see where the deer are coming from. A lot of times they like to sit in there and uh, if they're looking over their shoulder I like to see what's coming in behind them so I just I like to see as far as I can um, not necessarily a, a super clear shot through there but at least I can see and anticipate what might be coming and, and get ready for when it does step into the more clear area over here. So what I'm going to do now is go down this edge of pines here and take these oak limbs that I cut off a little oak earlier and uh, attach them to these pine trees at an angle, not quite horizontal, at a downward angle. And the deer will come up to them and rub their, their glands around their nose. Uh, the does will use them as licking sticks. The bucks will rub their antlers in them. It, it initiates a scrape area in January when they'll start scraping, but all throughout the whole hunting season, it's October now, they'll come up and they'll use these as licking branches, basically signposts to let other deer know that they're in the area. And then during the rut, they'll, it'll be a way for a doe to let a buck know that, that she's ready. You may say, why don't you just let deer use a natural tree, a natural oak tree? We don't have a lot of hardwoods in the area. It's mainly planted pines. There are a few oaks for, for the most part, when the pines get harvested, the bulldozers and the cutting crew just run over the oaks. So they never get very big. They never really produce a mast. And also I like to watch deer, right? I, I'm not just out here to kill deer. I'm not just out here to harvest deer. Uh, I like to watch them. So if uh, it's a day that that particular buck that I'm looking for doesn't come out, I'm, you know, if I watch a deer come up to this tree and lick on it and then another deer come by and smell where that deer is licked i mean that's a good day for me i don't have to kill a deer every time i'm out here and uh i create these opportunities by making these artificial lick branches 
All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Took you on a tour of the condo, did a little um, shooting lane cleanup, checked my cams, put out a little corn. But if you like this video, as I say always, share with your friends, click like, click subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.